Okay, so back to our diagram. How do we now use these values in a way that lets us take actions? All right, so we want to use these temporal different methods, um, which we can see kind of um, give us better estimators of the values for being in every state. But now we want to actually use them to take to choose actions. So if we imagine um, the sequence of states and actions and rewards, um, and states and actions, rewards and states and actions um, that we're taking, I'm saying that, repeating that for a reason, um, we get uh, all the experience we're going to need to, to update our policy, to update our value function, sorry. But we want to get a policy out of that. So before we just were given a policy and we're evaluating it. So like we said kind of earlier in the nano programming um, area, using the Q value function rather than the so the state action value function rather than the value estimate. Um, I guess we're calling it the action value function um, is easier, right? Because once you have the action value function Q, it's really easy to read off the best action because you're in a particular state. change my tool okay um, you're in a particular state here and all you have to do to figure out which action to take is to look at each of the individual actions for that in this table and pick the highest one okay um, here we're saying uh, that we can set the terminal states of Q to zero this is more about the update so what we're doing um, now that we have this TD update before we had V, we change that to the Q function here. So this should be kind of straightforward. Um, we're using Q instead of V, but still represents the value of being in the state and taking an action and following the best policy that arises from Q forward. But we've still got our, our TD, um, our TD zero um, update here that we're using. Um, so turning this into algorithm, the reason I was saying um, we're talking about our state and we get, to, we get an action and then we get a reward and then we get a new state um, and then we take an action. We have to figure out what action we would take there in order to get the value out, right? Um, so we need to know that action at the next step, right? So it's a very simple situation of saying that. So um, that's the things you need in order to update your value this way. So SARSA, so they call the algorithm SARSA. Um, the basic kind of TD algorithm that actually lets you take actions is called SARSA, which just stands for that. Um, and this is um, on policy, right? So remember we talked about uh, in the Monte Carlo part, on policy versus off policy. So we're gonna talk about that again a bit. Um, and it's an important distinction. So SARSA's on policy, um, off policy will be the next one, but for doing this TD um, zero update. So what's this happening? What's happening here? Um, same as usual, we have to initialize our, our value function for all the states and actions. Um, we're gonna set them to zero um, to start with initialize which state we're in. Um, for starting this uh, episode. So every time we're gonna start in the same state and then train through um, an experience in this domain uh, and learn the value function. So we're still, the goal is to learn the value function and then choose how to act from it. So our policy isn't represented, um, no explicit um, policy pi, um, pi, um, we get that from uh, from choosing uh, from Q, right? So we're going to take the epsilon greedy um, action from Q, which we talked about before, right? So you're going to um, almost always take the best action given the current state you're in, and with some probability epsilon, pick a random action. Um, So for every step then, you take that action, um, you observe the R, the R and the S, and now um, to complete the SARSA, the last A, 
um, in order to query um, our estimate of what the next step, right? We need to have our estimate of what the next step will be when it's Vs, um, S is sufficient, but now that we have Q, we need to have both S and A. So we have to choose another A from um, our policy, from our value function, and then we have enough information to get this update, right? So the environment gave us this reward, the, the alpha is fixed and given to us at the beginning, um, and so that's the update. We're doing the TD0 update, just like we did before. Um, and then we get the new state, we copy it, and we kind of repeat. So it's kind of the obvious way you would implement what we were talking about, doing the estimation, but just inserting the action in here and then taking it. It's like, what else could you possibly do, you'd say? Um, so um, here's another uh, a different domain. Um, we have our grid world. So we start in S, and we're kind of trying to get to this goal state. But there's wind. Um, so the idea of wind here is like going in this direction at this strength level. Um, and uh, obviously, as you're trying to move, you might get pushed to the side. So there's a kind of an unknown bias in the world to move uh, north. But you're still trying to get to this goal. What's the policy to get there? Um, and you get a minus one all the way until you reach your goal. Um, so that's the, the MDP. And um, if you talk about the optimal policy, the, the policy that Sarsa will learn is to, to move, kind of let the wind kind of take it. And then once it gets out of the wind, um, to move around, right? Because there's no wind in these areas. Um, it's only here. And so it learns to basically just let the wind happen and then find a way to get around. Because um, then it knows predictably where it is and it can kind of optimize. So this uh, plot here in the uh, inset is showing the optimal path, I think. And this is example um, 6.5 in the textbook. Um, and this plot with the growth is kind of a weird one. Um, I don't like this plot. Um, what they're doing is showing the time steps for it to reach the goal each episode. So how many episodes happened, I guess? Well, it took 2,000 steps the first time, right? If, he, if this was one, um, it took several thousand steps to get to the goal the first time. Um, and then each time the episode increased, how many steps did it take, right? So the fact that the slope is increasing means that it's getting to the end. So they just added the time steps. When they reset to the S, they kept counting steps. Um, so this is after training 170 different times and this is how many time steps in each each episode um and they said the the optimal um optimal uh, shortest path here is um 15 steps if you can get it right um and they point out that um monte carlo can't uh, is really problematic here um often uh, fails at doing this because um, if Monte Carlo ever finds a situation where it's stuck, right, if it gets into this corner and then can't get out, or gets into this corner and can't get out, um, it'll just stay there forever. Um, in the next episode, um, it won't even try going somewhere else because it's just trying to minimize the error between the previous experiences. Um, whereas um, TD method will kind of always try to update along as it goes, right? Um, So that's Sarsa, and so then we'll introduce this other one, um, the other way to do TD, and then we can do more comparisons of those, but they're really kind of to the core ones for doing TD. Um, this one's off policy, and this is queue learning, um, and you'll hear a lot about queue learning, especially when you get to deep learning. Um, this is a lot of people's baseline for reinforcement learning, actually, even though it's, as we see, um, halfway in understanding all the other parts of it is when you get to this, but uh, what does Q learning do? So Q learning's off policy, which was weird in Monte Carlo and it's maybe even weirder here, but it is basically not doing what you know is the best to do um, or, or you know, following one thing, learning one thing and trying another. Um, so the one step update um, for Q learning here is um, slightly different. Before, remember, we were just updating the actual um, 
Right, so for Sarsa, um, this whole thing was kind of like various stuff, and then RT plus one, and then gamma, and then just Q, right? S, T plus one, and A, and then the other things are the same. But here, we're taking the max of the Q, right? So we're saying, um, let's not assume, like I'm gonna take the experience of what I actually learned, I'm gonna update my own value, I'm gonna weight it, I'm going to subtract the difference of what I expected with what I actually got, but when I think about what I'm planning the next step to be now, so I've got this reward, and I assume the next step is not just gonna be the normal future, whatever I would do, it's gonna be the best possible action, right? So I assume that the step, the action I'm gonna take in the next step is not gonna be epsilon greedy, it's gonna be greedy. Um, and that's not the policy you're following, right? Because when you choose your action, you're gonna choose your action as epsilon greedy. But when you update, you're gonna optimate with greedy, right? You're never gonna deviate from picking the best value, but in reality, you're gonna deviate sometimes um, and explore. And so that means it's off policy because you're updating your model with a policy that doesn't match, right? So it's kind of a policy here, like a policy hat, and there's a policy here, and these are not the same. Right, and so that's what off policy means. Um, so it can be quite general in different situations. It might be hard to kind of work out if something's on policy or off policy. It's a good kind of question to ask on tests. Um, you know Q-learning's off policy, but if I give you a new algorithm, can you tell, right? Because there's a difference between essentially these two steps where they happen. Um, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's actually very useful because um, it helps it explore more quickly. Um, however, it does break some things. So now we can compare these two um, methods that are essentially the same, except for this difference in how they update their model. Um, here's another MDP, um, which is called cliff walking. And this one's good um, to kind of set your expectations for some things, right? So we start here, uh, the, you're starting at the start state and you're ending in the goal state. And the goal is to get there without falling off the cliff. I should have a picture of a cool cliff. Um, an Irish cliff, like jumping, going a thousand feet down into the ocean. Um, and uh, you definitely don't want to go off this way because then you get zero or a negative 100, negative 100 for going off um, off the cliff, right? All of these all of these paths lead you off. And you get um, zero if you don't go off the cliff. And you get minus one if you take too long. So it's a very unforgiving thing. You get to your destination, like, good for you, you get nothing. But at least you didn't die. Um, so what we're showing here is there's a, a safe path, which is the way of safety. Um, which will get you there and you definitely won't accidentally fall off the cliff. And there's a shorter path, which is going to get you there quicker and lose less penalties, but has this risk that if you somehow don't always go deterministically that way, you might die. All right, so we've got these, let's get rid of these. And in your own head, maybe um, look at these and try to guess um, which one, which policy is picking which. Um, before you really work out what this graph means, uh, you might be able to, to tell, um, right? But reward, negative rewards are bad, right? So Q learning um, is getting a lower uh, reward overall, whereas SARS is being safer. And that's because um, Q learning is taking this path, right? Um, Q learning is trying to take this path, right? You could say it's trying um, to take that. Whereas Sarsa is is trying to uh, to take this path. Um, so why would that be? Right? Because if we look at um, Q learning, it uh it's going to learn something, it's going to get a reward, something's going to happen, it's going to fall off the cliff, and go, oh, that was bad, I shouldn't do that. But you know what I could have done? Maybe I didn't go off the cliff. So when it learns, um, what would have happened next? Well, when it's off the cliff, it doesn't matter, because negative 100, it's here. 
right? But when it's just about to go off the cliff, one of the possibilities here is that it falls off the cliff, right? And it goes south because it's got an epsilon greedy. When it's actually following, acting in the world, it's gonna be epsilon greedy. So it's gonna randomly, every once in a while, try going a different direction just to see what happens. That's the only way you learn that falling off a cliff is bad, right? Um, but when it's updating its model and saying, you know, here's what I think is gonna happen in the next step, uh, it assumes it would never do that. Once it's learned about falling off the cliff initially, um, and it has values for that state and action, it would assume it would never do it when it's updating its model. But in reality, it might do it, right? So um, Q learning is the risk taker, right? It's gonna try, um, it's gonna assume these things would never happen, whereas Sarsa stays on policy. So it only updates itself based on what it did and what it will actually do next according to its current policy, right? So you only wanna take a, a choice um, based on your actual experiences, but it means overall you're gonna get, probably get a higher um, value, um, but it might converge more slowly. So there's trade-offs that we're gonna talk about. Um, but on this particular domain, SARS is gonna do better overall because it's never gonna fall off the cliff once it learns its policy, whereas Q learning's aiming for the shorter path um, but depending on epsilon, and here epsilon was not very small, um, it would do better. Now, if you set epsilon like vanishingly small on this one, I bet um, Q learning might um, do a fair bit better um, or get close, or maybe it would just be more erratic, right? So we could run that experiment. Um, so not, one's not better than the other necessarily in terms of right or wrong. So it's safer, Q learning um, is more aggressive in a way. Um, one thing that is different is that um, Sarsa is basically using all the rules. So everything that's applied for TD learning and Markov chain, um, Monte Carlo, and all these convergence ideas that eventually you'll you'll converge to the right value, um, value um, holds for Sarsa, right? So it will converge eventually if you explore all the states um, infinitely often. Um, this should say Q learning. I should update that. Um, but Q learning, since it's uh, broken this promise, it uh, isn't following the policy that it's isn't updating itself with the policy that it's actually following. Um, it has lost that guarantee, right? Um, and so Q learning does not have the um, the same convergence guarantees. And that's why people kind of avoided it in some ways, theoretically, for a, a while. Um, even 10 years ago, I remember being like, well, it's nice, but it has no guarantees, so maybe we shouldn't use it, right? Um, but now it's ruling the world um, because if you add neural networks, you get um, deep Q networks, um, and it's very effective um, because of the same reason we find even in, in this domain and some other ones, it's um, often much faster. Um, and better in practice, because this eventually is an important uh, point. A lot of things converge eventually, but it is really kind of um, as n goes to infinity. Um, you never get to this convergence anyways. So in this particular domain uh, for the cliff walking, Q learning is not as good, but in a lot of domains, Q learning does just as well or better than Sarsa, much quicker. Whereas, you know, when you get to the infinite um, extent of it, Sarsa or some method like that on policy would pass it, but um, Q learning would be more effective in practice. But it depends on your domain. Again, if it's a more of a, a safety um, issue or other advice, um, you might need to take a longer time and stay on policy. That will apply to beyond algorithms beyond Sarsa and Q learning. Um, so if we just look at them both side by side, like we said, there's very little difference, um, except about this way that you're dealing with the action. Um, that you're going to take in the future step, right? So one way to think of this is that Sarsa is holding itself to the choice it makes here, right? It chooses the next action that it would take in the next state. It upsets itself with that. It actually assigns that action for the next loop, and it does it, right? Sorry, I went too far there. Um, it takes that next action, um, and it uses it, right? Whereas Q learning says, I'm gonna find some action here, a prime, whatever, and then just throw it away, right? And so when it comes back up here, it chooses a fresh, act, fresh action um, from the policy directly, 
ignoring whatever it picked here. Right? There's no reason for it for these to match um, what it chose last time. That's the main difference. Um, yeah, so that's still we're still in this uh, corner, and um, that kind of gives you a couple kind of practical uh, implementations of this TD learning concept, and kind of ties together hopefully this fusion of um, Monte Carlo and dynamic programming um, into one thing.